Well, hello, Faith family, and thank you again for joining me on the Daily Connection, and thank you for taking the time to get into the Word. It's so important that not only do we get into the Word of God and we read the Word of God, but that we study the Word of God so that the Word gets into us. So we're looking at how do we avoid the pitfalls of hard times, and when I think about that, we really want to be careful with that. You know, Aaron started us off yesterday saying that, hey, we need to consider it all joy from James chapter 1. Because some of the pitfalls that we might encounter or that we might fall into when it comes to hard times are the pitfalls of disappointment, uh, the pitfalls of discouragement, the pitfalls of doubt. I've often heard people say, you know, why why is God testing me? Why, you know, why is God allowing so and so? And and today James is going to tell us exactly why these times of testing come. Because as of yesterday, he said, consider all joy when these things happen. And so now in chapter one, verse three, James says this because. You know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. So the word you know means that it's something they're familiar with. It's not something, you know, it's not a surprise to them. He says, you know that this is the reason why this is happening, meaning that you've experienced it before and you're in this season again. So stay joyful, stay upbeat, stay encouraged. Uh, you, know, you know what? Now, the testing of your faith produces endurance. The word testing there doesn't mean like tempted, uh, as it might, you know, in some cases, it, it, instead, it means to be uh, tested in order to demonstrate the authenticity of something, uh, that something is, in fact, genuine, uh, the, the pure nature of something versus what might not be pure. Uh, and it's the whole idea of, of a revelation, uh, of trying to understand the the true nature of something. Um, we might could associate it with as we came through school. You know, we would take tests. Why? Because that teacher wanted to understand just how much of the information, just how uh, what, what a grasp we had of the concepts that, that were presented to us. And so we would take that test. Because clearly, if we didn't have it here in terms of understanding or in terms of just pure intellectual knowledge, then we couldn't put it on a test, whether it was a Multiple choice, whatever, although I have to say, multiple choice usually worked out a little bit better, but I digress. James says that this testing has a purpose. And to me, that's one of the ways that we avoid the pitfall of hard times is that we understand that, like Romans 8 says, God works all things together for good. Those who love him and are called for his purpose. So we need to understand that when these times of testing come, First of all, we have to make absolutely sure that we see them, you know, we understand the source. Because there are times when trials come, and there, or there are times when we're tempted, that, you know, that we're being tempted by Satan. You know, James says later on that no one who's being tempted says being tempted by God, because God doesn't tempt. So first of all, we have to make sure we know the source. We, we understand where it's coming from. Then we know, once we identify the source as God, we know that God is purpose God has purposed that season for what to produce endurance uh, some translations say patience and although that might be the end result or that might but be be what's working there endurance in this case according to verse 4 is the idea of maturing it's patiently moving through a season of hardship in order for a person's faith to be complete that word complete. Uh, does it mean like a finished product? It means complete more in the lines of mature, growing, uh, in, in far as from new believer to mature believer. And, and why should we rejoice in all that? You know, and, and a question that our writer asks is, why is it so important that we grow in strength and endurance as Jesus followers? Well, obviously, the, the hardship and the persecution that James is speaking to here was pretty commonplace. Uh, we know that from the book of Acts. As we see the church beginning to form in Jerusalem, we see persecution break out through one of its, you know, who would become later on one of its greatest church planters, uh, Saul at that point. And that persecution spread the church, which is exactly what God wanted. And then we see later on that persecution again breaks out, and the church is then spread out even further until eventually, through Satan's attempts to destroy the church, God uses that as the avenue to spread the church, and the gospel goes out even further. But we know that test, these trials, these times of, of hardship were commonplace because not only does James talk about it, but, but Peter does as well. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself 
restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. So the suffering that James is speaking to in regards to this time of testing is the same thing that Peter may be speaking of here. That's part of the ebb and flow of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. I remember Jesus speaking to his disciples. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. And God takes that persecution and he purposes it for his good and for our maturation to help us grow in our faith. Why is it necessary for us to grow? Because we're going to encounter various seasons of hardship. In some cases, maybe it's something that we brought upon ourselves, but it's going to be a season of hardship. We need a mature faith to help us see beyond the difficulty of the moment and instead see the delight of what God is going to be producing through his ministry of grace. And that's the important thing to know that God is working. That's the reason why James can say, count it all joy. Why? Because God has a purpose. And so if you're going through a season like that right now, first of all, we're praying for you. Secondly, know that it's not in vain. It's not purposeless. It's being purposed by God to produce a stronger faith in you because inevitably everyone's going to face the ultimate test of faith, which is death. And if your faith is matured and, and been growing through your seasons of life, when we stand on that threshold, our faith will mature to the point where we're ready to encounter that threshold. We're ready to step across by faith, believing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so in that, God is preparing us, not for that season only, but for other seasons as well. So our testing, in which we should rejoice in, James says, is going to mature our faith and bring it to the point in which God would have it to be. Well, I pray you have a great day. I pray by starting the day in the Word of God, your day is going to be saturated with thoughts about the Word of God. Maybe memorize one of these two verses or a short phrase in one of these verses. And all day long, you're thinking, you're meditating on, you're mulling over, the, some of the old English would say, these words, and you're contemplating how they apply and then how you go about living them out. Speaking of living them out, when we're in the Word of God and our life is saturated by the Word of God, we're being obedient to the Word of God, that means we're going to live sent. 